Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Outside the bar, Eric was strolling with child Ju- With a laugh, Eric brought up where Sean had taken Eric to fish as a youngster. At some point, I will bring you fishing down there, Eric said. As Jude whined, Jada left the bar with a crate. It seems as though you have your hands full, Jada said with a laugh. Jada saluted Eric on his new child. This is Jude, Eric said. Eric glared and began to say something. However, Jada halted him. I'm simply happy that things turned out for you. Jude here is an exceptionally fortunate youngster. I'm exceptionally glad for you, Jada said. Eric said thanks to Jada, and she requested to steer the conversation in a different direction. Eric got some information about the crate in Jada's arms. Rafe requested that I move in with him, Jada said. I expect this implies you said, okay, Eric said. Jada made sense of that she had not chosen at this point. However, meanwhile, she was doing spring cleaning, for good measure. I'm simply happy things are working out in a good way for you and Rafe, Eric said. What's more, I desire to keep it that way. Jada said. Jada conceded that she had not lived with anybody since her ex. Thus, I simply need to be extremely purposeful with my choice, Jada said. Which is generally something to be thankful for, Eric concurred. Jada and Eric hoped everything would work out for one another. In the wake of dropping off her garments to give, Jada got back to the bar for a feast. Steve came by her table to make proper acquaintance. Jada apologized for having been not able to join Steve and his family for supper. You can definitely relax. You have a standing greeting whenever, Steve said. Steve inquired as to whether she was okay. Hesitantly, Jada conceded that she was having a harsh day. Steve urged Jada to open dependent upon him. Jada let Steve know that she had seen Eric with the child. I'm glad for him. It's simply that it brought back a great deal of recollections. I don't have the foggiest idea. I believe I'm simply close to home today overall, Jada said. With a gesture, Steve noticed that it was the commemoration of her dad's passing. You recollected, Jada murmured. Marcus was my first, dearest companion. It was him and me against the world for a ton of years. I would always remember this day, Steve said. Jada said thanks to Steve. You have no clue about how that affects me, Jada said. Steve conceded that he had gone to the bar explicitly to converse with her since he realized special times of year made the commemoration especially troublesome. At the point when we lost my father, I had gotten him a Christmas present. Furthermore, I was higher up right presently cleaning my storage room, and might you at any point accept that I actually have it, Jada said. Steve gestured indeed, and he showed Jada a keychain that Marcus had made for him. It's one of the main things I have left from my young life, Steve said. Steve told Jada that Marcus had assisted him with being a superior individual. Your father would be so glad for you, Steve said. Jada embraced Steve. In the recreation area, EJ furthermore, Nicole sat on a seat together. That was the last thing both of us required. Leo obvious paying us an unwelcome visit, AJ said. What might he at some point conceivably have implied about our child, saying it isn't actually the case that he passed on? Nicole inquired. EJ noticed that Leo was a fraud and that he could never have anything valuable to say. I'm certain he was attempting to take advantage of here and there our distress, EJ said. Nicole pondered resoundingly the way in which anybody could be so awful. Befuddled, Nicole asked EJ what Leo could acquire with such completely false. EJ shrugged and he noticed that Leo was frantic and alone. I'm certain he was simply attempting to extricate some money, EJ, he said. Nicole gestured reluctantly. Such terrible timing, attempting to give you misleading expectation when you'd quite recently acknowledged reality, EJ said. Nicole withered. EJ inquired as to whether she had adjusted her perspective. No, we saw it in highly contrasting when we did the DNA test. Just, I can't prevent myself from pondering. Would you say you are certain there couldn't be anything to what Leo said? Nicole inquired. AJ noticed that when Leo had been at risk for going to jail for the passing of their child, Leo had not let out the slightest peep. He would have sung like a canary quite a while in the past to save his own terrible ass, AJ. He contended. EJ let Nicole know that after she had gone out, Leo had slipped once more into the house through the passages. Nicole said, I needed to smack him upside the head just to dispose of him, AJ said. 
Baffled, AJ protested that he realized he shouldn't have made an arrangement with Sloane to free Leo. You don't have the right to see Leo in and out of town. Not after what you've had to deal with, AJ murmured. Nicole guaranteed EJ that she was fine. EJ asked Nicole, assuming that was for what good reason she had been vexed when he had tracked down her in the recreation area. With a shrug, Nicole conceded that she had run into Eric and the child before EJ had shown up. EJ put his arm around Nicole. It's simply a lot for me. Yet I'm glad for Eric and that he's a father to that sweet little child kid. Yet I can't resist the urge to feel a sense of urgency to believe should work on something for himself and Sloane. I simply feel horrible for what I put them through, Nicole said. You shouldn't. You're the person who has had to deal with a ton of hardship, EJ advised. Nicole said she expected to follow through with something. Leo visited Sloane at her condo. You just escaped prison yesterday. What difficult situation might you at any point have proactively gotten into? Sloan inquired. Leo brought up the injury on his jaw, and he let Sloan know that he had been attacked due to her. I got bludgeoned on the grounds that I had an uncommon assault of soul, Leo said. Leo confessed to Sloan that he knew the mysterious about her child. Or on the other hand, would it be advisable for me, I say, Nicole's child, Leo added. Sloan acted ignorant. However, Leo made sense of that Dimitri had recounted to him the full story. He guaranteed me, Sloan protested. He additionally told me if I somehow managed to utilize this against you, you'd give me anything I needed in the whole world. You'd be so frantic to cling to that young man, Leo said. Leo added that watching the introduction of the child had transformed. For once in my life, I was ready to make the best choice, and this is the very thing that got me. I attempted to tell EJ also Nicole reality, Leo said. You what? Sloan howled. Leo made sense of that EJ had thrown him out. Then I courageously returned. EG punched me out, Leo added. Leo made sense of that EJ had responded before Leo had the option to tell EJ that the child was alive. Sloan heaved. I'm here now since I've determined that destiny is enlightening me, that I ought to utilize the data concerning Nicole's child as Dimitri planned. To coerce the damnation out of you, Leo said. Sloan frowned at Leo. Above all else, you will get Dimitri out of jail, Leo requested. It's inconceivable, Sloan said. Sloan contended that she had gotten the most ideal arrangement for Dimitri. However, Leo said it was sufficiently not. Sloan asked Leo what else he needed. Leo said he needed the world. Or on the other hand, do I want to rescue woman informant once again from retirement? Compose the entire corrupt anecdote about how Nicole is your child's genuine mother, Leo said. Eric got back. What in the world is happening here? Eric inquired. I was simply leaving. Evidently, it's rest time for the little child, Leo said. Leo commended the buggy. Only the first in class for your supernatural occurrence child. Isn't that so? Leo asked Sloan. Leo let Sloan know that he would be in contact, and he left. I let you know taking on that case would have been just a burden, Eric murmured. Eric asked Sloan what Leo needed. Sloan contended that Leo had requested that she track down a more ideal arrangement for Dimitri. For what reason would you say you are so shaken? Eric inquired. I just missed you and Jude. Furthermore, you all took surprisingly lengthy. Sloan lied. Eric let Sloane know that they had run into Jada and Nicole on the walk. There was a thump at the entryway. At the point when Sloane opened the entryway, Nicole and AJ were in the corridor. Awful time, Nicole inquired. Not a terrible time, simply a shock. Eric was simply letting me know he ran into you all, Sloane said as she welcomed EJ. Also, Nicole inside. Nicole gave Sloan a sack with a Christmas onesie. I realize this little signal doesn't compensate for everything I put you through these beyond couple of weeks. Nicole began. Eric expressed gratitude toward Nicole for the motion. Sloan concurred. EJ approached Eric. I value you allowing us to drop by unannounced. Nicole truly expected to do this to show that she was recuperating and continuing on, EJ said. Across the room, Sloan and Nicole gazed at resting child Jude. I'd put the onesies on now, yet he's taken out, Sloan said. Nicole gestured an arrangement, yet she seemed uncomfortable. In the town square, Leo saw a gift can, and he looked inside it. Great, Leo. You don't have a working still, small voice or two pennies to your name. So what would be the best next step, Leo said. Desolate, 
Leo called the jail to converse with Dimitri, and he discovered that Dimitri had been moved to a supermax jail. I realize you did this, Sloan. What's more, presently I will explode your reality, Leo snarled. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.